And um, really, I think the best way I can describe wave in a way that you don't have to correct anything in the future when you have taken more physics and math classes is to describe it mathematically. Uh, I can describe wave mathematically, so let me do that. So by the way, waves are the one topic that you will see across, if you take three semesters of calculus-based engineering physics, wave is the only topic you will see across all those three classes. You are seeing it in this class right now. And in physics 4B, if you take it with the correct people, you will see derivation of electromagnetic waves towards the end of the semester. And in physics 4C is when you are going to deal with uh, optical uh, electromagnetic waves, optics. And you are going to talk about uh, deal with the quantum mechanics. And one, um, one of the ways of describing quantum mechanics is through uh, analysis of wave. It's, it can be called wave mechanics. There are other ways of approaching quantum mechanics. So this is what I mean. Waves are the most important topic that I can teach you. Um, because you are going to see it in many different contexts. So, um, so let me do this uh, description of wave, uh, this mathematical description of wave. So you've seen here that uh, wave can take many different uh, forms. Oh, by the way, so this would be one form where it's, you get sine wave, what you thought a wave should look like. And another way I can do wave is actually this. And you know, I can move this kind of however I want. It's up to me. And this shape that's moving across, that describes wave. So the complicated shape you saw, not a pulse, not a, a periodic thing, but something that, you know, essentially whatever it was I wanted to do. Let me see if I can sign. I don't think I can sign. Yeah, my signature does not lend itself to being waveform. Never mind. Um, so you know, the, we want to have a description wave that's so general that it can describe that. So we are not going to be able to describe with a function like you know, if if we try if we try to say waves are something that takes a form like this, well, that's not going to work. It's going to work for some waves, but not all waves. Um, so the equation that I'll need to write down is actually not. This equation, equation that I'll need to write down is actually it's similar in form to the other equation that you have seen. When you are covering oscillations, you saw equation of motion, which said the double time derivative of something is equal to minus some constant um, that I'm going to write it out that is omega squared times the constant. Like this is what you saw, right? So with the waves. What I can do is I can write down the equation of motion for a wave. So, so I, I, I'm approaching this from entirely different direction from how we did the oscillation. With the oscillation, we started off with the physical system and we derived this. But because wave is so general, what I want to do is instead of starting out with the physical system, I'm going to give you the end point. So let me write down the equation of motion, equation of motion for, uh, for something that we can call wave. Or um, there's uh, I, the, the whole equation of motion for a wave. It's a very long phrase. No one ever really says that. We call this the wave equation. So let me write. <laughs> so the, Proper way to call it is the wave equation. Uh, let me see if I have it memorized correctly because I'm going to have to try to write it down from memory. So it's just like this equation of motion, it's going to be a differential equation. So it's going to involve derivatives. Um, let's say it's an equation of motion for some kind of function f some kind of function f. Um, this f is going to be, it's going to be a bit peculiar. It's going to be a function of position and time. That kind of makes sense, right? So this is what I want you to imagine. When you look at these waves, um, when I try to describe this wave, 
I need to describe it with a function of position and time. Uh, think a function of position is easier to see. Right now, I have uh, uh, frozen the time. So right now, what you are seeing is not a function of time. It's a snapshot at a moment in time. And what you are seeing, these beads, you can see different heights of beads, right? These different heights of beads are the function of position. So I could describe this as, I could describe this shape as some height of bead as a function of position. And, but that's not enough because right now I have gotten rid of time by freezing the time. But well, it, uh, it's also a function of time. It can change as time changes. So this height of the bead is going to be a function of position and time. So it's a little bit easier. If I, so if I put it to oscillate, then what you're seeing here, the height of the bead, it can be described as a function of position, as in first to be the second bead, third to be the third, fourth bead, and so on. They have different heights. And, but given one bead, it's going to have different position at different times. So function of position and time. So that's what we, that's the function that we are trying to specify with this wave equation. So I have this function as a function of position and time. And it's a differential equation. So it's going to be described in terms of derivatives. How many here have seen partial derivatives? Um, like seen this symbol, this weird looking delta, um, like something like this. Many people probably haven't seen it. You get this in math uh, 3C. So one thing that I'll tell you that, so partial derivative is actually simpler than the derivative you know. In your calculus class so far, you only dealt with the function of a single variable, right? That's why you only dealt with the derivative. When you have a function of multiple variables, what we mean by this partial derivative is that when we are, we are taking the derivative, it's something that you already know. When you are taking the derivative, we are going to pretend that t is a constant. That's what we mean by partial. So partial derivatives, you know, in, when you're taking the derivative, it's actually pretty simple. Because it's a, you take the derivative with respect to x, and you treat everything else like a constant. Yep. So, um, so, so that's one thing that I kind of have to describe. And it's going to be the second order partial derivative with respect to x. So it's an equation. So this has to equal something. And what that something is equal to is, uh, let me work out the, yeah, yeah. So it's equal to, uh, it's actually equal to another derivative. It's equal to the double uh, derivative of the, the same function, f. So you don't have the, the function by itself anywhere. Double derivative time. And then it's going to need a constant because each time you take the derivative, uh, this actually reminds you of a unit. This gives you the unit of pos um, position, right? So it's whatever unit the function is in divided by a uh, meter squared. This is whatever unit the function is in divided by second squared. So you can't say these two are equal to each other. There has to be constant between them. And the constant, let me write them as one over capital C squared. What unit does that C have? Meter per second, yeah. So it has a unit of velocity. So let me just write it down as a V squared. And let's see in, in what sense this is a velocity of whatever. Okay. So this is what we call wave equation. And I guess, um, so I was hesitant to define what a wave was. We could say, well, wave is a function that satisfies this equation. Uh, by the way, this is not the only wave equation, but this is one of the wave equations. In quantum mechanics, the wave equation actually looks a little bit different. But uh, this is the classical wave equation. So uh, if uh, you have something that you can describe as a wave, then it, you have to be able to describe in a way that the the function, it can be a function that describes, uh, in this case, it's a function that describes the height of the bit. In terms of sound wave, it would be a function that describes the pressure at a given point. Um, electromagnetic wave, it's a function that describes electric field and magnetic field. Uh, what other example of wave, wave have you given me? Oh, water waves. That would be the height of the water surface. Any other waves? 
Yeah, so you have some parameter, and when you have a mathematical description for the parameter, it's going to satisfy this equation. So that's what we are going to call wave. Okay, so what I want to spend a little bit, but not too much time, is um, writing down form of a general solution to this equation. I can actually write down a form that um, every solution to this wave equation has to satisfy. As in, you know, so we have, so you know, we can always simply write down, I have a function. I have a function g of position and time, right? You're just imagining of some function of position and time, like that doesn't do anything. What I'm saying is that once I start requiring that this is a function of, uh, this is a solution to this differential equation, then uh, I, can, uh, I can constrain this function to take a very particular form. As in, um, if I say g is uh, as a fun independent function of x and t, I can say, well, I can actually rewrite this as uh, another function of a single variable, as long as this single variable is formed in a very particular way out of this x and t. Let me give you some intuition for this, actually. Um, you can intuitively get at this. Uh, let's see, pulse, um, yeah, slow motion. Let me do, generate a pulse. Okay, there you go. Um, let's just say that I have a function, h as a function of position x, that describes this shape. If you plot it, this h of x, if you plotted this h of x on a plot, you know, as a function of x and h of x, then its plot would look exactly like this. Like, you can imagine that, right? Oh. And what I, I guess what I'm asking is, what would you need to do to this function so that it's not just a function of position, but it'll be a function of time also? And when you let time flow, that this function, new function of position and time will describe this uh, uh, wavy thing that's moving across. Like, do you, have you learned uh, linear transformations in your math class that describes uh, how you would modify a function to describe a shape that's moving, uh, that's translating? Really? You cover this in algebra. As in, you have uh, this function parabola. You start out with this, uh, uh, let's start out with the function you know. You have, you know, this is y is equal to x squared. And you, instead of describing this, you want to describe this new function. This parabola moved a little bit over, like this. What would this be equal to? Like how would you describe this new function, which is the old function simply moved to, to the right? Uh, one person at a time, Arjun. You add something, but you have to do it carefully. Someone here who knows how to translate a function. Like a number and then yeah, so you change the x, right? So you are going to take this x, and so you say the plus, but when you do it, um, you will see that it doesn't quite work. It's minus, right? Yeah. yeah, x minus whatever distance d that you are moving it across, squared. This is how you translate a function. I'm pretty sure this gets covered in algebra. <laughs> yeah, so you know, if you have forgotten it, then that's the sense that I want to remind you of. So when you look at this function, um, so all you are seeing here is that as a function of time, it's getting translated across the space. So because I'm a little bit out of time, let me just give you the answer. So. Um, so this form of function that this will take is that you start out with the actual original shape. So you might say h as a function of this, x, and what you do need to say is that now you need to have a term that describes how this shape is translating across the space. And for that, I write down velocity times this v times this t. 
Does that make sense? Like, does this make sense that if I told you that if there's a function that I can write in this form, that um, that that uh, I can write down it down as a function of a single parameter, where position and time are combined in this very specific way, then this will satisfy. This will result in a motion that looks like what you're seeing here, a stable shape moving across the space. And this would also correspond to uh, satisfying this uh, wave equation. Does that make intuitive sense? If it does, great. In, and especially if it doesn't, doing the math, that's actually the easier portion. So let me prove that if I have a function in this form, this actually does satisfy this wave equation. Because it's a, I think it's a lot easier to demonstrate that. So let me do that. Um, so let's say I have a function f, and instead of writing it as a independent variables x and t, I'll say this f is a function of x minus v t. Uh, so it can be, you know, many different examples I can give. It could uh, look something like. Uh, so if you're trying to think of examples, this can be something like some amplitude times exponential of. Uh, minus x minus vt squared over some characteristic length lambda. Uh, this is something that you can actually plot on Wolfram alpha, and you'll see a little bump that moves across. Um, so, so you know something like that. But um, so you know uh, some complicated function that could look like this, where the only constraint is that wherever you have the variable the variable has to be organized to, together in this way. Yeah. Uh, let me prove that this satisfies a uh, wave equation. So how do you show that a function satisfies a differential equation? You take the derivatives. So I'm essentially just plugging this into the equation to see if this equality holds. So yeah, that's all I'm doing. So when I do that, so I'm going to need to take some derivative. So let me do that. Um, so I need to evaluate. I need to evaluate the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Um, this is where I will need to use a chain rule. So I take the derivative of the outside. That's going to be something. I don't know what. Let me just call that f prime. And then I have to take the derivative of the inside. Well, I guess that's just the one. Right? So all right, the one derivative, that's just f prime times 1. But um, so uh, let me just clarify. This would be f prime. Function of a single variable, where the input of that variable is x minus vt times 1. Yeah. OK, I need a second derivative. So let me take, it, take one more derivative. So if I take one more derivative with respect to x, then um, so it's going to be f double derivative, f double prime. And that's some uh, functional form. That's some kind of form. Um, if you take this example, you know, take imagine taking it's exponential of minus g squared over lambda, and imagine taking derivative with respect to g twice. That's what you get with the f double prime. So it's some function. I don't know what exactly, but it's going to be a function of x minus v t times derivative of the inside is once again one. So this is the uh, left-hand side of the wave equation. Uh, let me calculate the quantities I need for the right-hand side. I need a double time derivative, not the position derivative. So let me take the derivative of f with respect to time. Then the derivative of the outside will be the same, because it's the same outside function, f prime x minus vt. Now this is where I have to be careful, derivative of the inside. So I get my, a factor of minus v out, right? So times minus v. I need a second derivative. So let me take one more derivative. Derivative with respect to time. 
So for this outside function, I get f double prime function of x minus vt times another factor of minus v. So it will be now minus v squared. Let me plug both of these into the form, uh, into the wave equation. So I get f double prime x minus vt is it equal to 1 over v squared times f double prime x minus vt times minus v squared or v squared. So you see that v squared cancels out. And this is really the step that proves that this coefficient that we have to put in here, that is the velocity. That if you are correct to say that this is 1 over velocity squared. Because uh, when we have a form of the function where meaning of this velocity is much clearer, we get that in the process of proving that it's a solution, that yes, that cancels out. That's the only way they can combine. And the remaining is this is equal to that. Yeah, it's the same function over again. So a is equal to a. Okay. So this is a general form of a solution to the wave equation. Uh, I should say this is the um, this is the general. I should put a little qualifier. Traveling solution. to the wave equation. 